Hello, hi, hello. My name is Jen and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to do a video in the same type of style that I did last week. So we're just gonna go and have a look at two recent news stories that I thought were interesting and kind of disturbing, very disturbing actually. But uh, you're gonna see why they are relevant to what I talk about on this channel. The video that I am working on, the scripted video that I'm working on is taking a little bit longer than I intended it to because I want to be very the video that I'm working on that's going to be released next week is about SJW uh, gender studies type parents and how they raise their kids and why it's taking longer is because I really want to be able to formulate myself in a way that I make myself very clear so people that don't necessarily agree with me will understand exactly where I'm coming from uh, because I think it's important to show these people how they are over political and how and why we think they are using their children as tools in their politics and why we think that it's wrong people in my camp why they and me think it's wrong to do that uh so yeah i think that you guys will enjoy that video i uh, look forward to that it's coming next week if you want to support my channel and my work there's going to be a link to my patreon and my paypal and also a swish number down in the description so this video is going to be about uh something a little bit more serious let's get into it so uh the name of this article is former juryman lectured about equality at the same time that he was collecting rape novels about children and raping an underage girl. This man has been revealed to be Denny Olofsson, who has during the last 20 years made himself known with his work within the children's and youth organization within sports, youth, sports within the Swedish sports movement and um, organization, something like that. He has also been running a massage activity for both children and adults. This is this is the the massage activity is what he used to rape this 14 year old girl. He would tie her up and rape her. According to GP, which is the newspaper that this news is from, they uncovered that this man, who was active within the sports world, also had made himself well known as a women's rights activist. He was lecturing actively within equality, ethics, and values within the sports world, something that he also tried to shine a light on during his trial, and I quote, What I think is important is that women and girls take up space in the Swedish sports. If you would have done your research on what I've done that's been good, you would have seen how much, how much good that I've done he says in the trial. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. This quote is like a prime example of why there's a meme going where people are saying that just you should watch out for leftist feminist men because they feel that they can go around and hold lectures about equality, which is a very transparent thing to do. Like it's not it's not hard to just say, oh, women are oppressed and we should help women and then they get like a round of applause. But in reality, they are tying 14 year old girls up in their massage parlor and raping them and also collecting. Ooh, like, you know, this is this is this is, this is the type of shit that gives them a bad name. And he obviously knows that he's a vile man. And so therefore he feels bad about that somewhere, I guess. And so he feels that he is, um, justifying that by having lectures about equality and you know trying to mask his evil by talking about how women and girls are oppressed and should take more space in the sports world i don't know it's fucked up the article says here in he was collecting erotic children's rape novels and in addition to the 14 year old that he raped he also has said under the trial that he bought other women as for sexual purposes. During the trial, he says that he had no idea about the girl's age and he would never have an interest in having sex with someone under the age of 15 and that he would never have any reason to believe that she was under 14 or under 15. This was an argument that the prosecutor was able to disprove step by step. Among all the, all the evidence that was found against this Denny Olofsson, uh, there was also found pictures that Denny had taken of the girl 
at their first encounter. So he had secretly taken pictures of the girl at their first encounter. And also amongst the evidence found against him, there was a, a collection of erotic novels that Denny Olofsson had kept at home in his wardrobe, where a majority of them would depict children that were tortured, genitally mutilated, and raped by older men. Amongst these novel, there was one about a, li a little girl that was tied up and raped. This is a lot like the rape that he would commit. In the court, Denny Olofsson was charged with four years in prison for multiple cases of rape on a child, 15 cases of buying sex from a child, as well as buying sex from a w vulnerable woman. And here comes the very uh, gross part. Well, all of this is gross, but this is gross from a justice viewpoint. Uh, it says here, it will be hard for him to get a job ever again, and therefore his sentence was lowered. Danny Olofsson tried to appeal his judgment about the rape against a child at the appeals court, but he was charged for the same crime. However, the appeal courts chose to lower his sentence to three and a half years. The lowering of the sentence was uh, justified by Denny Olofsson not being able to ever work within the same field again. Probability of him being able to get similar assignments in the similar field are very low. The appeals court therefore justify a reduction in the a sentence by four months to three and a half years behind bars. This is gross. I hate our justice system. I hate it at the bottom of the heart of my heart. I hate it. There needs to be some change. And also don't trust uh, male feminists. <laughs> Just don't. And this, uh, this actually correlates really well with our next story, which is about the same type of thing. But, um, at the same time, very different because this is about a protagonist and not an antagonist. Uh, so it says here, a father of toddlers charged with abuse of daycare pedophile. This story is um, very sad. And also, I think that we're going to see a lot more of this if the sentences for child abuse are as low as they are here in Sweden. And like, criminals don't get punished for the crimes that they do, I think that people, men, are going to take justice into their own hands, which is exactly what happened here. The news that the pre preschool teacher was suspected of sexual ab abuse broke down like a bomb. A parent is now being prosecuted for seeking out the preschool teacher in his home and abuse him, abusing him. Quote, if he says that I beat him, he'll probably be right, says the father in an interview. The child care worker in Bucirka has acknowledged that the crimes have been going on for several years, both at home and at the preschool. It is a case of sexual abuse. He is also suspected of gross child pornography offenses and abusive photography. The child care worker was arrested and requested to be detained, but the court found that the reasons were not sufficient. He was released and allowed to go home. Shortly afterwards, he was approached by a person knocking on the door. The caretaker tells him he tells the newspaper, I guess, that he thought that it was the police and he opened up. Instead, it was a father who has a child at the preschool. I think it's good on him. Um, I think that is a perfectly reasonable reaction. I'm sorry, I do. Uh, and I am not saying at all that you should go and... I am not saying that you should go and beat up a pedophile or rapist. We cannot really take justice into our own hands, but at the same time, I do not see him as a criminal in any way. In any way do I see him as a criminal for beating up a man who has molested kids. The preschool teacher tells that he was attacked with several blows to the face and kicks and he was pressed down to the floor. I was then given a knee to my left cheek and then it was just black. He did recognize the man as a parent. The man has even, has also taken a choke hold and he had threatened to kill the 
preschool teacher if he would find out that he had touched his child. The pedophile says, I felt very threatened and I feared for me and my family because he did name my family. I'm glad that he felt threatened. I hope that he pissed his pants. Uh, The police was called to the scene, but when the patrol arrived, the man had disappeared. He was later identified and was interrogated by phone. The father did admit that he had been there, but he says that he had a bad recollection of what happened. He then says, and I quote, I wanted to hear that he hadn't touched them. That's all I remember. That was all that I was thinking about, says the dad in the interrogation. He also remembers that he didn't, that he never got an answer. He was asked, do you remember that you hit him? And he says, and I quote, if he says that I did it, then I probably did. The father also tells that his wife has been going to the crisis center after the abuse has been known, something that other parents have warned for earlier. This event has turned our lives upside down. I've been forced to take extra parental leave to support my home as my wife does not is not able to go to work anymore or, or to function as usual. Dad stands in front of trial for abuse, illegal threats, and is now risking jail. I think that we should do something for this dad. I think we do. I think we do need to, like, give him the best lawyer there is, and he should not go to jail for this. He should not go to jail for beating up a pedophile. I really don't believe he should. And if that pedophile goes to prison, which I hope he does, I don't know if he will. I hope that he's in prison. That's what I think. So yeah, um, I really hope the best for this dad. I think that he was in the right. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I'll say it anyways. And I think that we will see a lot more of this if the justice system doesn't change and if the justice system doesn't, and the government doesn't like get it through their heads that our kids, our wives, our daughters are important to us. Our sons are important to us. We're not gonna allow these deranged people to roam free in society and, you know, molest our children. Like, we're not going to do that and just stand by. Yeah. So, um, that's all I wanted to say. uh, And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.